this is when the channel started to decline and um, we'd had problems with the, the flows. We'd had um, one of the sluice gates at Denver was silted up so they couldn't open it and they were flushing all the water through the relief channel which had, um, which had altered the ecosystem there and it looked like we were going to have chub and dace and pike back which is how it's gone these days. Hell of a pike water these days, the relief channel, it's crap for Xander. Anyway, these little white dots are all dead Xander. Yeah, if you walk along the relief channel with a head torch at night, you can lamp down to their, their eyes reflect like cat's eyes. I've been walking up and down here every night. I lamp a few down to see how many are about. And all these right. There you go. I gathered them all up and took a photo. That one's a perch actually, but uh, the rest is under. What it was, if you look, that's silkweed. And these are very small, fragile, weak fish. They've not got enough body weight. Their dorsal fin gets stuck in it. And they can't move it. It just it completely drowns them. Because they've suddenly run... They're not supposed to run it off as fast as that. And they're taken to just opening the sluice gates and the water go... And all these were left high and dry and died. So um, I took photos, and because I'm in the Xander Anglers Club, I, I was um, trying to get Neville Fickling up and shouting about it. But um, we lost, and the suspense has declined uh, for Xander in a, a massive way. That was one of the last Sandra I ever caught down there, 2003. It was starting to slow up, the Sandra fishing was. Um, my mate Dale Robson, who, who lives in Kingsley and had fished down there all his life, came to me a few years before this saying, do you catch many schoolies these days? I said, no, they're all over eight. I'm always catching nines and tens and elevens. That, that's what I thought. He said, I'm getting worried that there's going to be no future. Well, he was right. I didn't think he would be. Couldn't see the, the Xander fishing of that quality coming to an end. That's, um, I just showed you this a few slides back. It was the only 14 that I did catch again. Um, I caught it in 2002 from that hot spot with the boulders and I went back two years later, caught the same fish at the same weight. So it's not putting any weight on at all, it's just holding its own. Couldn't catch any more after that. That was the end of it. We did, um, I did a full season going down to Fens and didn't catch a single Xander. Um, And then I did another half season and only caught one schoolie and then quit and headed for the seven. So I'm not flogging a dead horse. So I'd wait seven or eight years for it to come back, but I'm still waiting in hope. But I think it will. Anyway, this is what I think caused the decline. I was catching mitten crabs from the Relief Channel before anyone had heard of them in this country. Even the environment agency didn't know about them. I was catching them regular. Because I fished with strips of fish at night, it's like perfect bait for crabs, isn't it? Um, other mates who fish for Xander on the Relief Channel said they thought these crabs were a myth because they had live baiting off bottom. Whereas my bait on the bottom you see, I've just got a, a roach head on there, on, on a, a hair rig. And they strip that in no time. So I started to think, I could see, as we were getting more mitten crabs, the Xander were declining. And I started to think there was something to do with that. I mentioned it to Stevie Younger, 
on the back on the bank, and he came straight out with it. You're right, Baz, they're eating the spawn. And I think he's hit the nail on the head there. Um, Xander don't stick the spawn up on weeds like other fish. They don't put it anywhere safe. They hollow out a little, little patch in the gravel and lay it there. You know, perfect for crabs. Now, if my dead bait was getting stripped to the bone within half an hour, every night after dark, wherever I cast it, what chance has any Xander spawn got of surviving? You know, so... I think that's got a lot to do with the decline of the Xander. I really do. Anyway, I can tell you... Bastard things those are, you know. Anyway, I've, I've found out what you do with them. You wind them in, wind them up on your rod, and dangle them in front of you, hobnail boots in the rest, move them as hard as you can, and they just turn into soup. <laughs> they do, they just shatter instantly, and that's the end of them. They're supposed so, to be nice to eat, they are. Yeah, well, you wouldn't. You could see where I'd been fishing, anyway. <laughs> I believe the gonads are worth a load of money. It's an aphrodisiac, I didn't read, but I've not tried it. <laughs> so there's mint crabs in Trent and that, yet yeah, there's underpopulation in Trent on the up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Perhaps they spawn differently, or the crabs, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll have to find out, won't we? Well, there you go. Yeah. It's, um, but there's something in that, what Stevie <coughs> Younger said, when, if they eat the spawn, that would make sense to me, but we don't know for sure. I've heard that they are levelling out and a bit in decline down the fence, but I've not been down to Abigail this year. So uh, I live in hope. That, uh, what month is it you're catching these crabs? All, every single month of the year. Even in the middle of winter when it's freezing. Yeah. You ought to give them Eastern Europeans. I think better than fish you eat these. <laughs> They're bloody big, some of them, you know, size of a dinner plate, like, the bigger ones. But there's, there's millions of the smaller ones. I don't know what the answer is. That's I really come don't. Come Europeans that eat better than fish. Mm. What, what I did work out was that the, the breed in the sea. Mm. So <coughs> they've got to go back to the sea. And I don't, not sure... But I don't think they travel that far inland. So I did wonder if you walk up the system in the fens as far away as you can from the sea, if there's going to be more Xander. But I don't know about well, that. He's mitten crabs right the way up to Cromwell. Right, yeah. Well, uh, do they not cause a problem on the trend? Yeah. No. I don't think that they're on the trend in great numbers. We've been, we've been finding them on there for years and years, but not, yeah, not but in great not numbers. Not so many, yeah. No. Yeah. You see, this, there was that many. This strip your bait in, in, in minutes. It's probably like just fishing trend that eat them. Mm. Yeah, chubber and barley. Maybe well, eating them as young crabs, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps the, the fens have not been as fast flowing. It suits them better and there's more of them, I don't know. But, uh, <coughs> But we, I say I think it's the mitten crab that's caused the decline of the Xander. It could be something else. We, we, we don't know for sure. Eastern Europeans, Eastern Europeans as well, yeah. So that with that, and I had caught a Xander and I didn't go to the fence for a couple of years. And I decided to, I just went back on a recce and I said to me, hey, look, instead of fishing miles away from the bridge, I'm just going to fish next to the bridge where I can park my car and have a bit of a social. And uh, I said, there's no bloody Xander, only going to catch a few pike anyway and have a bit of a racket. Blow me down, I caught a 13 pounder. And, uh, and they've gone down there with golf strap, so there's no Xander left. Um, so I thought, great, I'm having some of this. So I went back again, 10 days later, to the same spot. Oh, the same bloody fish again. <laughs> so I phoned Stevie Younger and he goes, ah, well, they're not moving then, are they? Oh, yeah, great, but there's only one. <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, went back a few times, couldn't catch any more, not even that one. But um, it does make you wonder if there's the odd one there like that, how big some of them could go. Now there's, there's no other, not great competition from other fish. So, I will be gravitating towards the fens in a couple of years. I've just got a bit of an eel thing going on this next year. When I catch a zander and I want to retain it till it's light in the morning for a photo, that is how I retain them. Now, sacks are no good. I've got this out of the water on purpose. I've put it where it's shallow. So the zander, when it puts its dorsal fin up erect, the spikes will not get caught in the top net. If you just stick it in a net underwater, it's going to rag its fin up and look, um, they do get stuck in the netting. So I would never put one in a, a sack or a net where they could catch the fin. They'll lie in that all night very happily with the fin up and they can even get to the end and turn around without catching the fin. So that's... That is how I, I go about it. Um, how are we doing for time? Do anyone want to go get a drink in or anything? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to just carry on. Are you buying? No. That's what you buy. We'll have an off time, Barry, so we can do Yeah, we'll have an off time, yeah. I get bothered by eels a lot when I'm down the fishes, stripping the, the dead baits. And I um, get the same problem from mitten crabs and from crayfish. Um, especially seeing they use dead bait sections a lot that let off more flavour and it, it seems to attract all these things more. So, eel section as bait is no longer an option. Um, it's illegal to kill an eel to use for bait, which is what I've always used for Zander. It's one of the best baits for them. But um, that all came to an end when they actually banned you from using it, eels, unless they're frozen, of course, but I don't use frozen. Um, there is the law. Eel is now classed the same as shad. You must return any eel you catch from any water in England and Wales, including estuaries and inshore waters to a distance of six nautical miles. So, there it is in black and white. You cannot take an eel and use it for bait anymore. So, I had to find alternatives. Now, if I ask any group of pike anglers, what they suggest, they always say, lamprey, 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 a load of rubbish. That is not resemble an eel section at all. The reason we used eel section was to deter mitten crabs, crayfish, and eels that whittle your dead page down. That, the skin on an eel section is like steel plated. It's very, very tough and it pre protects the <coughs> eel section <coughs> from the um, nuisance species. Lamprey skin, on the other hand, is soft. It's next to useless protecting it. So that there's, there's actually no resemblance between that and eel section to use for bait. So this is what I came up with and it worked. <coughs> Instead of the, um, <coughs> the skin of the eel that was protecting the, the dead bait, as in the eel section, I thought, I'll get this mesh and shove my dead bait inside it. Sh just shove your bleak inside that and um, it will stop, that will act just like the eel skin did, from stopping the... Um, <coughs> the invasive species from getting it. Then I, I met a barbel angler and he was, he had his boil, he had three boilers on. 
inside a piece of string tube, like that, to stop the um, crayfish. And he was catching barbel. So I've not actually been sander fishing this year, but I meant to go out and develop this further. I'm sure that if I stuck a roach, perch, dace or whatever inside that tube, that the, the zander should still come and get it, just as the, uh, the barbel did with his boilies. But uh, <coughs> I've got to go out and actually try that. So somewhere between that armour mesh and the string tube, should be able to protect the baits from the mitten crabs, the eels. Went to look the at the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal after the fens had declined because I've heard it was quite an interesting canal to have a look at. I found the bit of the canal that I found was very nice. It had clear margins with water cabbages in, as you can see. It's about 14 foot deep in the middle there and it's got two boat channels, which is very interesting. The seven is the same, incidentally, which we're going to get to in a bit. Two boat channels, <coughs> not one. So, what I found, also, it has these bridges, and each bridge has got an attendant on it, and when a big ship comes, he lifts the bridge for them. He goes over half past five every night and leave the bridges down all night so there's no big ship going to come through after half past five so um, that was a, quite a good thing so what I found is that there's, like I said there's two channels going down to 14 foot which is a good depth for a canal and in between the two channels it's only six or eight foot deep and very silty, mushy, gathers all the leaves and bits of stick and all the bait fish and all the zander are there. So once the boats stop coming through after half past five, you can stick your bait out right in the middle on the shallow bit between the channels and it's not going to have a, a boat come and tow it off and catch your line. So, I had great success on this, uh, doing that, on the shallow bit. Unfortunately, I was only catching little schoolies. Um, so we moved, it's 15 miles long, this canal, and uh, it's all very deep. We moved, it took me quite a while to find that the Xander only in half the canal now. They used to be spread through the whole canal because they used to have some big gravel barges going up and down this canal. Those have all been decommissioned and stopped going up and down the canal. And the water has cleared. They were stirring it up. Xander like coloured water. So, someone told me that, ah, oh, didn't you know the Xander are only in half the, that canal? They're only at one end of that canal now. Wouldn't tell me which end, but I'd worked it out myself by then. Because the water in this canal, this canal bypasses the lower seven and all the ships use it because the seven's too, the, the currents uh, are too fast and it's got some bad bends so they all use this canal and the water comes from the seven and when it comes in at the Gloucester end where the docks are, it's coloured and as it moves along the canal the colour falls out so at the sharpness end it's all clear. And the Xander have all moved up towards Gloucester to be in the colour. And that's the state of play at the moment on this canal. <coughs> Again, if you remember I showed you the middle level running north to south, so does the Gloucester and Sharpness. So you know where I'm going to be casting now, into the shadow on the far side. The sun's getting up and all the fish are concentrating over into that dark shadow again. I know it works, I spent so much time on the fens. <coughs> and, uh, well, there you go, that's a shot from the fens, just to remind you about how we're casting into that dark strip. It works on a lot of waters, that does. And um, that 
believe it or not, it's the average size of the Zander we're catching there. Um, Pete caught the biggest, he had a, a 7.15. But I've met people down there who have 13s and 14s, so they are in there. Um, it was summer when I was there, and the Zander seemed to spread out in summer, so they could be anywhere along the canal. So what I decided to do was go back in winter when it's we've had a cold snap and all the silverfish have shoaled up in the wides and the boat yards like they do. And then the, the Zander shouldn't be far away. And uh, that was the plan. I was hoping to go back and find the Zander keeping the silverfish in a tight herring ball like these porpoises are. And... Um, The other thing that I found was that all the little Xander is catching, about 50% of them had whacking great big fang marks in them from huge Xander that had had hold of the smaller Xander. So when you say small, how small are we talking? That big. And that big. Yeah. Eight, eight, nine, ten, twelve ounces. And bigger Zander are grabbing those, and, and when you look at the fang marks, they are big Zander too. So, for me, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal in winter and fish with a small Zander for bait, and that, I'm, I'm certain that it's going to work, because I've seen that many with puncture marks in. Um, so, um, Incidentally, it works on the fens as well. I've, I've um, had quite a few little zander down there that uh, have been attacked by a bigger zander. So it, it's probably worth uh, trying anywhere, really. <coughs> and uh, I'd just stick it on a, a bolt rig, live bait rig like that, and let Don steam off with it. That's a yeah, little zander like that would be a perfect bait. <coughs> and... Um, like I said, most of them have uh, either been eaten or attacked. So, anyway, um, this boat went past, and I'd never seen a bloody boat called Zander, and it was heading for the Seven. So we thought we'd follow it. Now then, um, here's the Avon, coming into the Seven, and... This here is the Gloucester and Sharpless Canal that we just had a look at. If you see, that arm is the canal. And this is a seven, that squiggly bit. That's a tidal seven. Now that squiggly bit there is of more interest to me than the flaming fens at the moment. It looks absolutely awesome. Nobody fishes it at all. Nobody. Now I thought it would be unfishable and you wouldn't be able to get near the water for mud and tidal banks and all that. Well, if you have a look at that, you can fish that. And on this side, where these where these grasses are here, you could have your bibby there, the long-handled net, you could reach over there to get a fish. And you've only got to stick a bit of a plank over and you can put them back as well. And for some reason, nobody's fishing this bit at all. I don't think there's any any fishing clubs got it, or anyone seems to bother it. There might be 30 of us down there before you now. Well, yeah. I'd like to hear, give me a ring and let me know. There's plenty of it to go at, you know. Yeah. But I think um, it'd be hard to fish, but you guys at Fish the Trent know how to fish flows like that, so that's what you're up against. I'm definitely going to go and have a look, anyway. There's, a, there's another bit. Tidal, tidal seven, quite fishable. Right, well we've jumped about uh, a few miles up the river now. Um, I'll show people this because a lot of people ask me where they can go and catch a zander on the seventh. Well, you can go here; it's free fishing. That's the M um, fifty, I think, going across into Wales, it's coming off the M5 over here, and from that bridge up 
up here for about a mile, it's free fishing. Um, the Environment Agency have put the stages in, and all he needs is a rod licence. Um, it says in the rules that there's no night fishing, but I've been on there for a week, and the Environment Agency <laughs> driving past the <laughs> no, Patton Island. <laughs> Incidentally, it's the same on the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal that I just showed you. No night fishing under any circumstances. The bailiff came along and said, Is that how long are you here for? I said, A week. So oh, that'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop a night, but you can stay a week. <laughs> Apparently, they let you night fish so long as you don't uh, get drunk and cause a nuisance. So um, we didn't get drunk and cause a nuisance and got away with it. So. Anyway, here we are on the seven now. Um, these big gravel barges are the ones that used to go up the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal, that they stopped going up there and they used to stir it up. Now they're up and down this bit of the seven. And they load them up that full, they're scraping the bottom when they go past. So you can't have a line across the far side till they've stopped running. You have to fish the near margin. And uh, that was one's chub. Now, I love telling people that I've seen an Elva run, Elva run up the uh, up the River Seven in August, which is a month when you wouldn't normally see Elvas. There it is. <laughs> so as you can see, that the, they're loaded right up, and that's actually scraping the bottom. It's that deep. It's that deep down in the water. Now, that was my first Xander off the seven. I caught schoolies, little things, loads of them. This one was just under ten pound, and I've been fishing too deep. Yeah, I mentioned earlier there's two boat channels. I caught this on the shallow bit in between the boat channels. And that is when I started to get my thinking cap on about it and um, work out how to fish the seven. Um, it come from shallow, fast flowing water surrounded by deep water. Um, we always need a rope on the, the seven. Even though there's a fishing stage there, there's a ten foot drop down to that and you need a rope to climb up and down. A lot of the places I was fishing didn't even have a stage in because I, I go pioneering in, in rough areas and uh, cut my own steps out and that. Um, well, we've, remember this one I showed you earlier about the, the currents, which is how I, I worked out that Xander like flow. Here is the relief channel, my favourite old swim, and that current would be belting down the middle now, and you'd be able to see the flow. And all the Xander would be in it, so Xander are definitely attracted to flows. Right. Now if you look at that dorsal fin there, and you look at that fin on the grayling, there's a massive resemblance. We all know that grayling like flowing water. Well, so does under. It's all in the fins. So, armed with that fact, you should be able to work out where to cast on a river. So, here I am on this swim on the River Seven. Nothing to tell you on the surface. All the instincts of most people is to cast here in the edge, it's quite deep there and um, overhanging trees and all that. Pike, that's what you catch there. I managed to catch over 150 Xander in the seven and it was either two or three pike that I caught, that was all, because I was fishing for Xander, not pike, trying to avoid them. So. There's two boat <coughs> channels here, so where I would cast is everywhere, I'd count it down and plumb it up and I'd be feeling for rocks and zebra mussels and stuff like that. Now then, this is the same swim that we've just been looking at. 
not much to see on the surface, but when you plumb it up, <coughs> these depths are in feet. Um, here I am in the bivy, and it, it drops off in the margins and then comes up into this shallower bit. Then you have a boat channel, then a shallow bit between the boat channel, then another boat channel, and then another shallow bit before we go off into the deep margin and then up the margin shelf. So there's a lot of variation in depth in a cross section of that. Have they been dredged out, Harry? The boats going up and down. The boats are going up and down regular. Yeah. Yeah. And those big gravel bars just scrape the bottom and dredge it out themselves. And they have to stay in that boat channel or the <laughs> But I could... one thing I can tell you, there's an awful lot I don't know about the seven. <laughs> so don't ask me too much. <laughs> um now then. I've got hundreds of Xander here in this swim. I went up and down this section of river for ages to find this hot spot and by God I found a hot spot. Unfortunately everyone that's seen me fishing it fishes it these days and I don't bother. So I'll find a new one. Um, the thing is will they know where to cast? They might think God he's catching a lot of Xander there but how was I doing it? Well, I'm going to tell you where they all came from, just about. Three foot deep there, and three foot deep there. Beggar's belief, doesn't it, really? When you look at all this, six foot, eight foot, sixteen foot, fourteen foot deep. Now, <coughs> in the middle of the day, if the water's not coloured and the Xander aren't feeding and it's bright, I would <coughs> cast into that deep pit in the hope of picking up a fish while they're not really feeding, because they're probably going to be lying up in the deep trough. Or, better still, I'll be fishing under these trees in the edge. See where it says eight foot? There's a bloody seal comes along, it dives under there, and it always comes out with an eight or nine pound Xander from under the trees on a hot day in summer. So in the hot weather there's, they are under the trees. But I catch a lot more when they're out and feeding at the peak feeding times. Now where it says three or four foot deep, it's hard. Bottom it's clay but it seems to have been compacted down by the current. Now I imagine that as it gets shallower the water must push harder. So I would imagine that there's more current bearing against that where it's three foot deep and they can lie in a nice flow. But that has been the reason why I've caught so many Zander from the seven because I've sussed this. Everyone else is casting into the deep bits. And there's, when I look around, those are the only two spots in that swim that are three foot deep. And there must have been a whole shoal of Xander knocking around each one of those holding areas. And there must be a lot more along the seven, because I find if I spend four days in a swim, I'm still finding features and, and, and different variation. It takes me quite a while to do a, a, a bottom contour map like that, several sessions. But um, it's worth doing. It's, um, <coughs> <coughs> you find the fish, and uh, again I'm looking for rocks and zebra mussels, although in that last swim there was no zebra mussels, it was compacted clay where I was catching them, but other swims I've found rocks, or I've just got zebra mussels on the end of my treble, so I've, I've stuck my bivy up there and fished and caught loads of zander. So they, they like to be near the mussels. So I moved um, 
that was up the, where I just showed you, was up the top of the uh, stretch with the Zander, and they go up as far as just below Boodley at uh, Stourport. Um, it's too fast flowing and shallow for them further up, so Zander will never populate the Severn all the way up to Shrewsbury. All these people that are going around saying, oh, they're spreading up river, they're up to Iron Bridge, they're up here, it won't happen. They, they, they like um, the habitat in the lower river, but further up it's more suited to barbel and chub. And I, and I don't think you'll get Zander there. Maybe in some of the pools in between, but uh, this bottom section, they've col colonised it. So I'm down near Tewkesbury now. Um, I found myself a field that can get my, zan, my, my van in and my bivvy up in the shade of a tree because it, it was August and it was hot. So you need some shade. Now, if you look, that tree is obscuring my cast. So I'm not going to have very much area to cast my rods into. As you can see, this is that same swim. I'm not going to be able to cast down there or up there. Can only go straight out. So this is that swim. There's my casting span, and I've mapped it. I caught my first double figure zander from the seven from this swim, and you know where I'm going to say I caught it from. Shallowest bit, five foot deep, in the middle, in between the boat channels, with the current bearing on it. Now if you look, there's a deep hole there that goes off to 35 foot deep. God knows what that is, but it was there. And uh, I did catch, catch a few Xander in that as well. So, I'm not sticking all my rods on, on, on the one thing, but... Anyway, the first double for the seven came from only five foot of water. Now if you look at the depths over here, it's 22 foot on the far side, and 35 here. I don't, I don't, just incredibly deep holes. And this is 18 foot to 20 foot there. Yeah, I caught one there, five foot deep. And there it is, 10 pounds something. My first, uh, first double from the seven. And um, I'm obviously onto something now if I'm catching them at uh, shallow depths like that. Uh, And then you get floods. Well, I put high levels, that's pretty low. When the, when the seven gets high, it's three, foot, it's three miles wide. But um, when it's like that, I'm just going to drop it in the edge because there's just too much debris going through out there. And um, Before I made the rollovers, I always fished with a, a drop-off, but I didn't like the clip on the end, so I always added a bit of power gum with my own clip on the end. And then that, that kind of clips up here onto the line, so it, it works kind of almost like a, a buttish indicator type thing. Um, I use my rollovers for all my fishing. And everyone said, oh, you won't be using those on the seven, because it, well, I did. And I, I was quite amazed. See, most people on the seven fish with their, their rod tips up, skyline style. Now, I started off like that, and then I discovered something. If you tip, put your rod tip beneath the surface by only an inch or two, then you discover that the reason that these rollovers have been pulled up by the current is because the strongest current is in the surface film. I never realised. As soon as I dip the tip below the surface, the rollover stayed where it was instead of rising up and I didn't have to alter the counterbalance weight of it. I never would have believed there was so much tension in the surface film. So, most of the seven, you can't get near the water to put your rod tip underneath, but on this swim, I could, and I managed it. And I was 
quite happily able to fish with my rollovers by having the, the rod beneath the water. And everyone else on the sevens got the rod tip up in the air, bail arm shut, bait runner on, and when as Zander takes it, they jump to the rod and try and give it a bit of line, but I'll be talking to them and the rod will go right round and come back again. I said, you just missed one there. Well, with mine, they carry on. The rollover flips and you catch it. But um, it's obviously got limitations with the flow when it floods and that. But um, I remove that counterbalance weight, then it's it increases the weight on the front end by taking that off and it's heavy enough to hold in seven even in a, in a quite a ripping through when you take that counterbalance off and then we add extra weights onto this vein to, to nail it to the bottom in the flow and uh, they all drop off as the zander takes the, uh, takes the bait so I haven't got my figures. I caught, I think I caught 150 zander in a season using the rollover. A lot of doubles and big ones amongst them. So it does work. And I um, preferred the tagging gun, as we've mentioned. Um, much, much better results in hooking them. We've had the rig before. Now, people. I've read in more than one book and article on Xander that Xander will not take your bait from the side like a pipe and then turn it. But it's not true. They say that a Xander takes your bait either head first or tail first. It ain't true. So I don't believe everything you, you read. Um, this is actually tried to take a photograph here and it's out of focus. But these are the teeth marks, the fang marks from the zander. And I had a hook at that end and I had a hook at that end. And the zander took it across the middle so I just struck and missed it. So it just shows you that they do not take it either head first or tail first. They will grab it sideways. Yeah, this is one of my rough swims on the 7. Um, you can imagine that when it's raining, can't you? And you get a rub, and your bivvy's at the top. Not, not much fun. Luckily, I'm, uh, I'm quite nimble-footed like a mountain goat, me. I've only fallen down there twice. <laughs> One time, I free falls and my rubs were underneath me, and on the 7, and I, I knew it was going to kill me, because the bank sits were going to... So I had to put my chest out and, and land on this bit of clay and it did win me a bit. But the seven is the most dangerous thing going. Um, look, like I said, I, I'm, I'm like a mountain goat, maybe, but some of my mates, you wouldn't, they wouldn't last a minute on there. The reason I put that swim in was because I found zebra mussels and rocks and um, just, just out here. There's the bastard. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to have to play a game with ducks. And we used to cast into the air with a lead on and stop your lead mid-air. And all the ducks would go, Wah! running for cover the newt. And I was a good shot and I'd splash it down next to him. So I started doing it with this seal. And it, it, uh, it learnt in the end after I hit it a couple of times and it, it kept away from me. Anyway, what it was doing, it was diving under the bushes in the edge on a hot day and coming out with an eight or nine pound zander and it's gone every time. So, so, it was really getting to me this seal, I thought it scared all the fish off. And it surfaced right in between my rods this time. Came, just came up right between my rods, looked at me, snorted, dived, went off. Five minutes later, I got a rod and caught 12 pounds under. Right in front of only a rod length out. So I thought, there you go, it's not scaring them all off. So don't lose confidence. Yeah. So, um, 
three foot and they set it up as a, a semi bolt rig. So um, it hooked itself and gets this huge weight and tore off with it. Not much to say really, I just thought I'd better show you some fish. <laughs> yeah. I've got a slideshow where people just show you fish and have nothing to say. <laughs> um, that was pleasing, that was um, a 13, <clears throat> nearly 14 pound. And um, by now I've, I've tracked down the, the Zander into a hot spot. And I'm waiting for October because October is my month for Zander. And every October the 13th, I go out Zander fishing and I always catch a massive Zander. It's my lucky date. So this year, I've gone down to the 7th and said, right, come October, I'm going to take it apart. So, <clears throat> this was earlier in October and um, like I said I always do well in October this is the month for Zander <coughs> um, that's 14.11 I was hoping to break the PB while I was fishing on the 7th because that's, that's my 7th ever 14 plus Zander and at 14.11 it's short of my personal best so I said to everyone, right, I've had a 14.11 and I'm going to take it apart. In the next six weeks, I will catch a few Zander over my PB. I was quite certain. It was just coming the right time of year. I've worked out all the swims. I found out where the Zander are. And um, I'm just showing some of the other 14s I've had. That's my PB I'm trying to beat. There we go. This was 2013. Went out on October the 13th and said, I'm going to catch a big Zander. Because I always do on the 13th. And just like that, it happened again. Lucky day. The strange thing was, I'd run out of bait. And I couldn't catch anything at all. And there I was on my, my lucky Zander day, and I got no bait. Eventually, I managed to catch a breeze. Uh...